Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and what I'm covering in this video is some really exciting stuff that has tons of potential use cases. Essentially, you can make your games like normal, and then make a second Unity window which hacks into the first one and interacts with your main window to do whatever you want to do. In my case, I use this in order to have a main Unity application running in my primary monitor, and a second one on the second monitor controlling the first one. So let me tell you the story about why I needed to research this. A couple of weeks ago, I started live streaming progress on the mini games that I was working on. It's been interesting to work alongside chat, so I definitely would like to make them more regular. And in order to make this a more regular thing, I went researching live streams in general. One of the awesome things that I found out was something called stream avatars. It lets viewers have a visual character walking on screen. I thought that looked fun. And then I also remember that I already did the research towards creating a transparent Unity window. I even made a full tutorial about it a while ago. Essentially, you can make Unity as a transparent overlay on top of the desktop. So one of the demos that I showcased was making an assistant that would tell you jokes, kind of like those characters that were so popular in the 90s like Bonzi Buddy. So with that, I very easily made my own version of stream avatars. I just have my characters using my animation system and all the sprites that I've used in my various Steam games. Then I connected them to YouTube live chat, which was something I also researched two years ago when I first attempted a live chat game put them all together and I had characters joining from chat and seeing things all on top of my desktop window. But then of course came a huge issue. With this everything works, but if this was meant to be used alongside chat then naturally I needed some way to control it. With the internet being the internet it was guaranteed that someone would try to say something inappropriate and I didn't want that to show on the live stream automatically. So I needed some way, some method of controlling things to manage the main window. But at the same time, this is an overlay. The live stream is showing on my main monitor, meaning that I cannot have the control window also on the main monitor. So that's what led me down this rabbit hole of making a second Unity window that controlled the first one and that I could place that one on the second monitor. That way I could live stream normally and add whatever data or control options that I want in that secondary window. For example, I have a list of characters that are live and I can manually remove any of them. I can also make the chat bubbles be based on approval, so essentially they only show up on the main monitor after I accept them. Then I also have some simple buttons for hiding the characters, showing a background, or disabling or enabling the on top. So that's what I use this for, but you can really do anything with this method. It's a two-way communication between two instances. What data you communicate is really up to you. You can use it, for example, to have your game running on the main window, and then a second Unity instance displaying some extra data, like maybe performance or stats, so it's very useful for testing. Or you can even use this without the main window being a Unity game. This is just using some basic c -sharp classes, so if you have some sort of app made in c -sharp, then you can use Unity to visualize whatever data you want to transfer. So this really has tons of potential use cases. Now, getting all of this to work was actually very difficult, so that's really why I'm making this video. Honestly, I'm not sure how many people are interested in this topic since it's such a niche specific thing. So this video is kind of for my own personal use. This way I have this method documented just in case I forget something and I want to revisit it sometime in the future. So the main thing is communication between two separate instances. And from my research, I found two methods that you can use to make this. You can use a TCP tunnel to communicate between both instances, or you can use something that c -sharp has, which are named pipes. During my research, I encountered someone mentioning how they use TCP, but the connection was always being dropped due to sending too much data. I'm not sure what is the amount of too much data, but I didn't want to bother with having to compress data, and I didn't need it for it to be over the internet, so I went with the named pipes approach. Figuring it all out was quite tricky, but in the end, everything is working, and it's quite simple and works perfectly. Alright, so here I am on my empty project. I have a simple game object with an empty script. So on this one, this is meant to be my server. So let's begin by making a function to actually start listening. Now the reason why I'm naming this server thread is because we're going to need to run this code on a separate thread. And in order to make a thread, first we need to add using system.threading. And then we can do a basic private void start. And on start we're going to start off the new thread. So let's make a thread, name it the server read thread, and make a new thread and pass in the server thread. Okay, so this creates a thread and then just server read thread dot start. So this will start running this function on a separate thread. And now the first thing that we're going to do in here is create the server pipe. Now the class that we need is inside using system.io.pipes. The class name is the named pipe server stream. And this one first takes a name and then a certain pipe direction. 
Okay, here it is. Now, based on the name that I use here and on the pipe direction, you can tell this is a read pipe. Actually, on the pipe direction, you can make it both read and write, so in and out. However, when you set it up like that, the communication has to be one type at a time, meaning that either you're reading or writing. If you use a single pipe, you cannot be reading, waiting for input, and writing something else at the same time. So that's why here I set it up with a pipe just for reading, and then later I'm going to make another one just for writing. That way we're always ready for both reading and writing. Now on the server, the first thing we need to do is wait for a client to connect. So just go into the name pipe and call wait for connection. So this is why you need to run this on a separate thread. Essentially, this line will block the code execution until a client connects. And just one note here, which is the pipes themselves, they also have async versions of the methods. So you can use them if you prefer to work with async and await. But here I won't be using the synchronous method simply because I find it simpler. Now, after this line runs, then essentially here we've got the client has connected. So once the client has connected, then it's time to start listening. Now for sending and receiving data, we need some sort of data stream. And for that, on the official c -sharp examples, they have this nice stream reader class. So you go ahead and copy that over here. Then we just need to add some using statements. So there you go, just system, system IO, and system text, and all the errors are done. Okay, so we have this nice stream string. This is a pretty simple class. Essentially, it's got two methods, one for reading a string and one for writing a string. So up here, we just need to use this. So we just use it and send in the pipe. And now let's read a message. So we go into the stream, we call read string. And once again, this won't block the code execution until a message is received, and then just doing a debug log. Okay, so just with this code, we already have enough to do a test. Then after we read the message, let's just do the pipe and close our pipe. So name pipe, and we're going to call close. Okay, this is the simplest thing that we have. Okay, so that's pretty much it for our server. It's set up to open the pipe. It listens to connections. When a client connects, it listens to a message then it prints out the message and closes the pipe. So now it's time to handle the client. So here I have another empty project. This will be our client. Now the logic here is going to be very similar. So first we make our function. Then we need to start the thread. So we start the thread and then here we create our pipe. And in this case, the class name is the name pipe client stream. Now the first parameter is the server name. So this can be a remote computer that you want to connect to, or in this case, we want to connect on the local computer. So just put a dot. Then for the pipe name. And finally for the pipe direction. And again, this one is just a write pipe. Then afterwards, instead of waiting for a connection, we just actually connect. Okay, so the client is connected and the way we set up our demo, the server then expects a message. So let's send one. We're going to reuse the same stream class. Okay, I've got the same stream class. Now just create it. And in this case, we just go in there and we write onto our stream. And afterwards, close the pipe. Okay, so that's it. As you can see, pretty simple. So if we test like this, everything should be working. Now, the one thing that we need to make sure that this test does work is we need to run the server first. If we run the client first, then essentially this line will fail and it won't try to reconnect. So I've got my both Unity instances. So let's start off the server. Okay, the server is waiting, now start off the client. And yep, there you go, and you see that everything did indeed working. So the client has connected, so the client connected, and then the server received the message from the client. All right, awesome. So here we have the absolute basics working. The server starts listening, then the client connects, the client says something, the server receives it, and they both quit. So everything else is really just building upon this. Now there's actually still one massive issue remaining that won't break this when we try to make a proper build instead of running in the editor. But before I cover that issue, let's quickly look at the final code in my live chat characters project. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel. So here is my final server. 
Now, as I mentioned, there's a separate thread, one for reading and one for writing. Then I also got a bunch of extra logic in order to make the code thread safe. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on how multi-threading works. Just know that in order to access Unity specific things like game objects and transforms, you need the code to be running on the main thread. So that's why over here I am working with some queues. So I've got a read queue and a write queue, as well as a read lock and a write lock. And then for those queues, then I've got a simple function that I'm running on the main thread. And this one simply goes into the read queue and dequeues and reads the command. So over here on the read thread, we do the same things that we just saw. So create the pipe, wait for the connection, create the stream string. Then we read something. When we do read something, then we use our lock in order to make things thread safe. Then we enqueue our message. Then just make it sleep so this doesn't run nonstop. And this is always on a while true. And then also just catching some exception, just making sure that it doesn't crash when there's some issue. And then the write method down here is working pretty much exactly the same way. Create a new pipe, wait for the connection, create the stream, get the lock, dequeue from the queue, and actually send it. So this, as you saw, is sending just pretty much normal text. So for encoding the contents of the messages, I'm essentially just using JSON. So I've got this function, which takes in just a string for the message. It creates a pipe command, which is really just a structure to hold some data. So I've got that, and then I simply convert that into JSON, and when I read the messages, convert it back into JSON. If you're not familiar with JSON, I covered that in a previous video. It's just a very simple way to encode some data. So that's pretty much all it is, and then over here, just a function to destroy itself. So this one runs on a mono behavior on destroy, and all it does is just aborts the threads. Now, aborting a thread like this is actually something that you should not do. However, I really could not find any other way to stop the pipes. Once they start reading, they cannot stop reading until it receives something. So this is not the ideal method, but I really couldn't find any other solution, and this does work. All right, so this is the server code. So as you can see, it's just expanding upon what we saw. And then over here is the client, which works pretty much exactly in the same way. So separate for reading, separate for writing. The main difference from what you saw is over here, essentially getting it to try to reconnect. So if it is not connected, then it tries to connect. If the connection fails, then wait one second and try again. So that's pretty much it. Then here, the same thing, reading into a queue. And then for writing, same thing, writing from the queue. And sending the message using JSON and so on. Now, as I said, there's still one massive issue remaining that drove me crazy for many hours. As we saw in the demo, everything is working perfectly fine. We have the server and client talking to each other. However, if instead of running this in the editor, you make a build, that's when everything breaks. You will see an error related to how named pipe server stream is not implemented. This is a very weird bug, however, after a lot of searching, I finally managed to make it work. I even posted on the thread that I found while Googling. So the solution was mainly to compile it as a 32-bit executable. For some reason, that one has a server implemented, while the 64-bit does not. So on the server, just make sure that you go into the build settings. And over here, instead of x86-64, just x86, which is 32 bits. Then I'm also using mono and api.net 4.x. On the client, I didn't have any issues, so I just ran it on my standard parameters. And with that, everything is working both in the editor as well as in the standalone builds. You can create a pipe to communicate between two instances, and you can pass through any data that you want. So in my case, I use it to create my main window, showing all the chat characters, and a second window to moderate and control the first one. If you have some sort of app made in C-sharp, then you can use Unity to visualize whatever data you want. Maybe you have a normal console app, like a website scraper, and you want to visualize some graphs and charts or just really for game testing. Play a normal build of your game and connect to it to display some debug data or a bunch of stats to help you balance levels and weapons. Unity is a game engine which makes it perfect for making complex visualizations. So this really has tons of potential use cases. All right, so this was a unique video on a pretty obscure topic, but I hope it helps someone. As always, you can download the Project Files and Utilities from UnityCodeMonkey.com. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.